Many campaign settings are vast in today's world of gaming, the likes of Eberron, Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, and Mistara being played by hundreds of thousands if not millions of people. And this trend directs world builders like you and I to create these expansive, detailed campaign settings for our own games. This direction leads many toward burnout and dissatisfaction as you know creating large worlds takes a large amount of time. Let me tell you my view on big worlds and what I do to create exciting vibrant settings with a lot of detail. Please make sure to like this video and if you enjoy my videos or appreciate my views consider subscribing to the channel. I'm hoping to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this month and I am rapidly running out of time so please help me. Thank you. When I started DMing around a decade ago, I was looking towards channels like How to Be a Great GM, my world building tips. And he had so many videos on creating these epic, vibrant worlds. He wasn't the only one. There were so many big and successful channels that were preaching this. And there still is, to be honest, right? Not much has really changed in that regard. But, you know, these massive, sprawling worlds that have... Um, endless possibilities right so when I went to actually make my own world using their ideas I found myself running out of steam very quickly but as I've grown as a world builder I've realized that smaller worlds are better and what do I mean by a smaller world well it's not actually a world that's smaller it's not like the earth shrunk or anything like that it's the idea of running campaigns in regional locations rather than you know throughout continents or vast kingdoms or anything like that and you know sure the world is still big it's just that it's unexplored or unknown to many people consider it like the known world right like in the medieval times they didn't really know about uh, Asia or anything like that uh, for me it's barony or counties or duchy level that I'm actually running I originally started to learn this style by um, by watching Matt Colville back when he was running his Barony of Benegar series. I don't know if any of you guys actually watched that, but it's set in a small kingdom that has more or less collapsed. And over the course of his campaigns, he would create a barony for each of his player groups, or at least you know that's what would happen. A player group would be end up being assigned to basically every region, but all of these baronies belong to the same kind of collective kingdom or region and I find that this style is great for newcomers as it allows for them to quickly learn lore about the surrounding area and develop their own emergent stories. This is typically how I run my campaigns now and it allows me to invest my world building time into content that is much more likely to be used. I used to design these huge worlds with dozens of kingdoms but most of these kingdoms were never visited nor really talked about by my players unless I went out of my way to talk to them about it. I'm now focused on creating NPCs and local towns, writing lore that my players will learn and explore. Sure, I can create bits and pieces for the surrounding baronies and kingdoms and continents and whatever else, but none of that needs to be in extensive detail for my players to actually have a good time. This is just stuff that I can mention to get them interested about the wider world. It's just a new zone that my players could explore in a future campaign when they're ready. Let's now jump to this video's sponsor, me! My book on designing hex towns has been up on Drive Through RPG for close to six months now, and so far it has become a silver bestseller on the platform. The book features a blend of creative prompts, practical advice, and customizable rollable charts, which allows you to design towns that feel organic, dynamic, and tailor-made to your campaign settings. I recently released a new version of this book with additional content that includes a bunch of new tables and it's worth letting you guys know that I actually have another new version in development as we speak. It's only $3.99 at the moment so feel free to go buy it if you want to gain access to a new resource to help you guys create great towns. Now let's get back to the video. In the Barony of Bedegar campaign by Matt Colville, one of the player characters, a half-orc fighter, actually became a count in the story and 
eventually was granted castle rent by the young baron. Sure, you can do this kind of stuff in a bigger world, but I feel like the sort of actions required to make your players excited and feel rewarded become bigger and bigger depending on how large the campaign setting is that your players are in. If it's an empire, then, you know, the players aren't just going to want a tiny little castle, they're going to want, you know, something very large in order to feel that same fulfillment that, well, this count would feel getting a castle in a campaign that is specifically set in a barony. It's all about allowing your players to have impact on the campaign and the story, which is a whole lot easier and more meaningful to do in a smaller world. Making big campaign settings takes time. So why not make your campaign over time like I did? I started off with one barony in my current world, the Barony of Ramsgate. And now, four years later, I have several kingdoms, duchies, and baronies as well. What's more is I've actually had players do adventures and campaigns in my different regions, which I've been able to use to cultivate the history and develop meaningful stories. A former player of mine, his dwarven character sits on the throne of the kingdom of Carator after a long two year campaign where they defeated the horde armies of the orcs and managed to reclaim their ancestral lands. I feel like what's really important is for you to determine what size is right for you and your table based on your preferences and storytelling goals. Here is a breakdown of what you should be considering when creating a smaller campaign specifically. Smaller settings benefit from having a brief overview and history that have clear and impactful recent events that will explain the campaign's current state. We don't want to overwhelm new players and we can define and develop the history as we go. The use of myths and legends do well to add richness to the game without needing to have lots of pages of lore. Well-defined geography is important and I find that less is more when it comes to this. Focus on a handful of essential locations such as towns, swamps, crypts and so on and so forth. The map of the Barony of Bedegar is such a great example of this. Practice doing more with less, rather than doing less with more. Maps are very useful to have as well, as it helps your players visualise the setting. You can make somewhere small feel pretty big with a really cool map. And we can focus more on creating areas of exploration, as travel is obviously going to be easier from settlement to settlement. I like using hex maps. And, you know, for you guys who are, you know, hex mappers, I would recommend using one, three or six mile hexes based on your preference. If you guys are interested in seeing me do a full feature video on how to run hex crawls and how to design them and all that kind of stuff, just let me know in the comment section below or by liking this video. If this video gets a lot of likes and I'll assume that you guys just really want a hex, hex crawl video. <laughs> As spoken about earlier in this video, we can spend more time making distinctive NPCs with strong personalities, motivations and relationships, which we can weave into alliances as well as rivalries and secrets, which will make our games feel a lot more alive and dynamic. My favourite part about smaller settings is creating a driving conflict or a central tension. I mean, you can do this in big worlds too, like, you know, Lord of the Rings, you've got like Sauron invading with his orc armies and all the other motherfuckers, right? Uh, but I feel like in a smaller setting, you're able to really kind of zoom in on it more. You're able to kind of focus on it more and cultivate key parts. It will be all becoming a bit of a mess, um, which is really, really nice. You don't need to you know, go through 50 pages of notes to try and figure out how to make everything link together. The established tension is really what is going to impact your setting. You know, and this could be a political power struggle, a looming a natural disaster, or a hidden threat. 
We want to design a conflict that the players can influence its outcome, which will make their actions feel impactful. I feel like that is especially good in like swords and sorcery type campaigns, which is what I really want to start leaning into, I think, in the future. It's just, uh, I feel like most swords and sorcery adventures and stories take place in like desert regions. And uh, I don't know, I, I just kind of like that like King Arthur uh, vibe in a lot of my campaigns. I don't know. This is I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking from from experience, you know, as a as a Briton. <laughs> I don't know. But but hopefully from this video, I've been able to share with you the many reasons why I think smaller campaign settings just work better. Right? What do you think about campaign worlds and my views to today? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, join my Discord if you'd like to gain access to my monthly events and join my community. Uh, I'm actually planning to run a Dungeon Call Classic one-shot this Saturday, and I'm still looking for a couple of players for that, so feel free to join and check out the posts that I've made on Discord if you're interested. Also consider joining my Patreon either as a free or paid member to gain access to charts, tables, and other resources that you can use to level up your campaigns. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then, thanks for watching.